So uh, basically, this came out of uh, a need or a want or whatever to authenticate people over the phone, um, whether they're calling about a password reset or a user creation or uh, something that we would want to uh, authenticate them for. Um, so this is all driven by this form. Um, this form is actually more of a user interface uh, for lack of what it is. Um, but Basically, so you pick a client, um, you can pick a ticket um, for that client, and then you pick a contact. And then what it does when you pick the contact is it reaches out to uh, our manage and it checks what their preferred authentication method is. Um, so the options are support pin, SMS code, and MS auth push notification. Um, if they don't have that value defined, it says that right here. Um, and then let's say uh, you've managed to authenticate them another way and we want to go ahead and set that support pin. Um, so you can type in a support pin and then hit submit. And then that's their support pin. So if you go back through. Contact support pin. This is a quirk that I have to work out. It doesn't select the new um, option unless you refresh the page, but this is the support pin that we entered in. It pulled it directly from manage. So now we can authenticate with that, uh, authenticate them with that number. Um, so then if we look at the other options that are available, I'm gonna refresh just so we don't encounter that bug again. Um, um, and then the reason we're picking a ticket is, and I'll, I'll show this a little bit later, every time we um, authenticate, it's putting a note inside the ticket saying that the user was authenticated um, and which option was, was used. Um, so we can go in here and we can change this to, let's say, an SMS code. So it's going into manage, it's pulling the mobile number from manage. Oh, we don't have a mobile num number defined. Okay, well. Let's uh, put one in. Um, I'm not going to put a real number in because this actually does send uh, text messages. So I'll just put. Uh, oop. I was going to make the same recommendation, Brandon. <laughs> so this will generate a random six digit code, send it to that number using our um, SIP provider. Um, and then you can authenticate them with that number. And then again, you can click submit. And I'm going to refresh again just so we don't have that issue. Now we can go in, pull that contact. And now it should show SMS codes, what they wanted. And there's that phone number that we put in there. So now I'm going to show uh, the last option, which uh, is the MS push notification. Um, first of all, I'll show you. So inside of manage, this is where that's all driven by down here. Uh, authentication method, we can select it with a radio button and then the support pin can also be entered here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change that method. OK, that's sick. And then come back here. So. Let's pull this pull ticket. Contact. Oh, that didn't update. Hang on. Oh, because it was, yeah, hang on. All right, so now we got the right authentication method, and then this actually uses uh, the SIP API to send out a push notification to that user. And once I receive that, I will approve it. And we got the results right in the form. 
and that's pretty much how all that works. Um, this is all driven by uh, option generators that actually do things. Um, so the MS auth push notification um, ends up making this show up, which runs an option generator that actually sends the push notification and pulls the result into here. Um, and then we get a markdown field showing what the result was. If it was denied, you'll get a, a red box that says the request was denied. Um, and then the same goes for if you were to choose SMS. So there's a option generator workflow that sends out that mobile number, sends out the SMS message, generates the code. Um, and it's this, this is basically your user interface. It's all right here. Um, so I guess I'll I'll dive into a little bit how that works. Here's the form. Um, there's nothing really special about the form other than the fact that it, it's basically all option generators that uh, trigger other option generators. Um, to look at the notificate the MS notification. Um, so here's where we're using the the SIP API. I'm I didn't build it out with a custom integration. I'm just using uh, secret org variables. Um, but we're figuring out. Uh, I built this out so I could use it either with this workflow or just by sending it a, a, a SIP user um, ID. So it'll to figure out which way it was called, send the push notification, um, and then it adds the ticket node at the end. Um, that's probably one of the more interesting ones. Um, the one that sends out the SMS message literally just gets the contact information from manage. Um, and then, oh, that's just the one that gets the contact mobile number. Sorry. There it is. Um, so this is the one that generates and sends the code. So this actually generating the code was a little bit tricky um, because the, the first way I thought about doing this was just kind of simply using a range um, and then like using a massive range that went from, you know, six zeros to uh, six nines, but that was too big. Uh, so what I did was just loop it um, six times. So it generates a random digit every um, every time it loops around and then it just concatenates the whole thing together into a, a single number. Um, and then it shoots that out via SMS. And then we return that code back to the um, back to the form with the option generator. And we're also adding a ticket note here and then I'll I'll show that ticket note too, just so. Uh, um, so I'll refresh this. So you can see caller with username authenticated via SMS. Uh, there's ones in here for the Microsoft Authenticator ones. Um, and then it will also, uh, if you end up updating the information through the form, it'll note that on the ticket as well. Um, so it kind of keeps a whole record inside the ticket of everything that's happening inside the form. 